tonight. Continuing unrest, minority religions in Bangladesh speak out against facing pressure from protesters as Nobel laureate Yunus attempts to steer the nation into clearer waters. Mass protest, India sees hundreds of doctors band together in demonstrations against the alleged rape and murder of a trainee doctor in Kolkata. Towing the line, Iran defies Western calls for quelling panic surrounding the retaliation of the Israel's latest attacks. And curious cats, lions at the Oregon Zoo were the stars of their own show movie as they discovered the hidden cameras were rolling, putting on a show. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ava Derana, World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Vinuth Warnasuriya. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight this Tuesday evening. We have lots of fresh updates to bring you tonight and we are starting off in neighbouring Bangladesh. Amid the ongoing political unrest in the Muslim majority country, minority communities including the Hindus in Bangladesh continue to protest against the recent attacks on them. Chief advisor to the new interim government, Muhammad Yunus, who is expected to meet two minority groups today, urged Bangladeshi Hindus to treat themselves as human beings and children of the soil. This meeting with Hindu, Buddhist and Christian Unity Council is keenly anticipated given that at least 205 incidents of attacks on members of Hindu community have been reported in 52 districts since the fall of the Hasina government. Meanwhile, the Indian Visa Application Centre in Dhaka resumed limited operations today. In the new interim government's first diplomatic engagement, the Foreign Affairs Advisor Tuhid Hussain said that bilateral ties are not to be influenced by the presence of one individual in a country. Over in India now, there is yet more civil unrest. The medical community across India demonstrated to demand justice and a safer workplace following a rape and murder of a trainee doctor in Kolkata. Authorities and the media say demonstrations for the deceased 31-year-old gained further momentum from the previous day. Thousands of patients were left without care across the country. Kolkata state officials said emergency services remained suspended in almost all of their government-run hospitals. And over 8,000 government doctors joined the strikes in the western Maharashtra state, halting all hospital departments except emergency services. Doctors held posters calling for justice for the victim, with some medics like Dr Ranganathan Dixit in New Delhi calling for the Central Bureau of Investigation to act. Doctors in India's crowded and often squalid government hospitals say they are overworked and underpaid and sometimes bear the brunt of violence by those angry at inadequate medical services. Medics maintain their workplace environment is unsafe even after the weekend arrest of a police volunteer in Kolkata for the doctor's murder. A health ministry spokesperson did not immediately respond to a request for comment. A Kolkata police chief told reporters a case had been registered against the suspect relating to rape and murder. And the region's chief minister said she'd given state police a deadline of Sunday to finish their investigation. If not, she'd hand it to federal agencies. Now some updates on the blaze in Athens. Greece's worst wildfire this year spread into Athens suburbs, forcing hundreds of people to flee as it torched trees, homes and cars overnight and choked busy roads with smoke and ash. Just eight miles from the Athens city centre, this is Vralicia, engulfed in smoke. Fanned by gale force winds, firefighters say flames had reached the deepest into the capital for more than two decades. Around 700 firefighters and volunteers, 190 fire engines and 33 water bombing aircraft have been battling the blaze that broke out on Sunday afternoon, 20 miles north of Athens. France, Italy and the Czech Republic are expected to assist with aircraft and firefighters. Spain, Cyprus and Turkey have also offered to help, a Greek government official said. Some residents in the hilly and wooded outer areas of Athens, like Pandeli, have stayed to try and protect their own properties. This man crashed his car as he tried to escape the flames. Summers in Greece have long been marked by wildfires, but hotter, drier weather linked to climate change have made blazes more frequent and intense. Greece experienced its warmest winter on record and is on track for its hottest ever summer. 
Large areas of the country have seen little or no rain for months, and temperatures are forecast to reach over 100 degrees Fahrenheit later in the week. More information on the Ukraine-Russia conflict now. The command of the Ukrainian's military says Ukraine now controls around 1,000 square kilometers of Russian territory in the Kursk region. The revelation was made in a video posted to Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's Telegram channel in which the military chief briefed the president on the frontline situation. Video released on Monday shows the governor of Russia's Belgorod region going door to door in villages, encouraging residents to evacuate in the face of new Ukrainian military operations. Belgorod is the second region next to Ukraine where Russia urged civilians to leave. And it comes almost a week after Ukraine launched a stunning cross-border incursion that caught Moscow by surprise. Another Ukrainian soldier shared this selfie from the Russian town of Suja, complaining that a Russian supermarket chain was inferior to a Ukrainian one. Slava <laughs> Ukraini! Ukrainian forces rammed through the Russian border last Tuesday and swept across some western parts of Russia's Kursk region, a surprise attack that may be aimed at gaining leverage in possible ceasefire talks after the U.S. election in November. Over the weekend, Russian President Volodymyr Zelensky publicly acknowledged the operation for the first time. The Ukrainian attack has prompted some in Moscow to question why Ukraine was able to pierce the Kursk region so easily after more than two years of the most intense land war in Europe since World War II. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Monday alleged that Ukraine was trying to undermine Russian stability with its incursion. He said, quote, the enemy will certainly receive a worthy response. Here are some updates on the fatal plane crash in Brazil. The engines and the black boxes of the plane that crashed near Sao Paulo, killing all 62 people on board, were removed from the accident site to undergo examination. This is according to a statement from the Brazilian Air Force. Over the weekend, the families of the 62 people who died in that plane crash in Sao Paulo gathering together just hours after investigators recovered the black boxes. Terrifying video captured the final moments. You can see the ATR-72 twin-engine turboprop operated by Brazilian airline Voipass spinning down. The crash itself hidden behind a row of trees, but we see smoke billowing after the plane crashed in a residential area. The big question now, how did it happen? The plane itself was not that old. It flew about 14 years. Some experts wonder if ice could have built up on the wings. Brazilian officials had been warning of severe icing in the area. Let's take a short commercial break. More of the news on the other side. And on the road to the White House, Vice President Kamala Harris' presidential campaign is blasting former President Trump's interview with billionaire Elon Musk, saying Trump's campaign is in service of self-obsessed rich guys who will set out the middle class. Trump joined Musk on X Spaces, a live audio chat feature on X, the social media platform formerly known as Twitter, for an interview. Millions of people ultimately listened to the interview, according to the live tracker throughout the discussion. A new poll from the New York Times and Siena College shows Vice President Kamala Harris taking the lead over former President Donald Trump in three battleground states, Michigan, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. The poll interviewed 1,313 young voters aged between 18 and 29 from August 2nd to 5th and showed 51 percent support in the major swing states for Harris against Trump, who has 42 percent support from this group, which is a nine percentage point lead for Harris. Pollsters have noted that this is, in fact, a 13-point shift towards Harris since the previous poll taken in early July when Trump led 48 percent to 44 percent. A poll from business intelligence firm Morning Consult released last week showed Harris to be leading Trump by nine percentage points among voters younger than 35 years of age. A poll from Morning Consult in July showed Biden to have a nine-point deficit among younger voters compared to Trump. Since taking over the Democratic presidential candidacy in late July, Kamala Harris has bolstered the party's overall base and strengthened party support against Trump. Meanwhile, former U.S. President Donald Trump was back posting on X ahead of his Spaces conversation with Elon Musk on the platform on Tuesday morning Korea time. Trump's posts included campaign videos highlighting his vision for the United States. 
He also took to X to slam his opponent, who he called San Francisco radical Kamala Harris. His last post before Monday's return to the social media platform was in August last year, where he touted his mugshot with the caption, election interference, never surrender. Before his return to X, Trump had been posting on Truth Social, a social media site that he owns. Meanwhile, the FBI said it was investigating after Donald Trump's presidential campaign said its internal communications were hacked and the campaign blamed the Iranian government. The FBI said Monday it was investigating claims by Donald Trump's presidential campaign that it was hacked by Iran. The former president said on Saturday that Microsoft had informed his campaign that Iran had hacked one of its websites. Trump said Iran was, quote, only able to get publicly available information. His campaign has pointed to a report on Friday by Microsoft researchers indicating that Iranian government-linked hackers tried breaking into the account of a, quote, high-ranking official on a U.S. presidential campaign in June. The report added that the hackers took over an account belonging to a former political advisor and then used it to target the official. It did not give further details as to the target's identities. The Washington Post also reported on Monday that the FBI was investigating an alleged attack targeting advisors to the campaign of President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. The newspaper, citing sources, said the FBI began the investigation in June and suspected that Iran was behind the attempts to steal data. The Harris campaign did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Harris became the Democratic presidential nominee after Biden withdrew his bid last month. The Iranian government has denied that it hacked the Trump campaign. Iran also rejected Western calls to stand down its threat to retaliate against Israel for the killing of the Hamas political lady Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran late last month. Warning against escalation and urging restraints. Five Western countries, the US, UK, France, Germany and Italy, in a joint statement have called on Iran to refrain from anticipated attacks towards Israel. We expressed our support for the defense of Israel against Iranian aggression and against attacks by Iran-backed terrorist groups. We called on Iran to stand down its ongoing threats of a military attack against Israel and discussed the serious consequences for regional security should such an attack take place. The appeal for calm comes amidst mounting global concern of an all-out regional conflict in the Middle East, as Iran and its Lebanese ally Hezbollah vow to avenge the recent killings of Hamas political chief Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran and senior Hezbollah commander Fuad Shukr in Beirut. In a show of support for Israel, the U.S. ordered a guided missile, submarine and aircraft carrier group to the region, saying it believes Iran may launch a strike against Israel as soon as this week. According to Israeli military, all leads are being chased and it's ready to foil any threat in real time. Iran's president, however, has said his country has the right to defend itself. While emphasizing diplomatic solutions to issues, Iran will never give in to pressure, to sanctions and to bullying and considers it has the right to respond to aggressors in accordance with international norms. Despite calls for restraint, both Israel and Iran continue to issue threats as the war in Gaza persists and cross-border fire between Israel and Hezbollah continues. Let's go for a short commercial break. More world news right after this. Welcome back. Lions at the Oregon Zoo were the stars of their own movie as they stole a hidden camera set up in their enclosure and proceeded to it, pour at it, carry it and yawn into it. According to a zoo post on Facebook, zookeepers hid the camera in the lion habitat the previous week. Within days, the lions found it. According to the zoo's website, the lions are a part of the predators of the Serengeti exhibit. And with that, we mark the end of today's bulletin. We will see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings across the globe. Well, stay tuned as Anuradhi Vikramasinghe will join you next with the Nightly Business Report. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.